I am your host for this week. Glad to have the honor. Um, we're going over chapters five and six. I was asked to focus more on six. I'm also going to um, bring along a little bit of the process I used. Um, did, tried a few things, tried to um, use the R markdown for generating the slides. <clears throat> and it was my first time I actually only figured it out like an hour ago. So they're really ugly. Um, but um, so just figuring out how to put in line breaks and everything are, are still uh, things I've got to look into. But, um, and um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, so I just want to take a second and just, like I said, just jump in a little bit on the process I use. So <clears throat> um, going to, you know, the, the book club um, repo, I have a branch of it. So here's the branch for, for mine. Made a copy of the code here. And then in R, um, made a project. And so if you go like new project, um, uh, let's go on, let me just say cancel, see if it'll let me still do that. Okay, hold on, don't save, let's try that. Yeah, so you'll go there, then you wanna go version control, git, and I would paste this in here. I'm not gonna go so far as to hit create cop projects that's already there, but if I, once I paste in the URL, uh, okay. Never mind. I don't have the. I didn't copy it. <laughs> Bad example. All right. Let me get. Let me go ahead and copy it. So here is my branch. Copy it. Now let's try this. Paste that in. Boom. And it'll create a, a project for that the, that um, clones off of that. So then what I wound up doing is I, want to, I didn't know the right way, what kind of directory we wanted to use, but essentially I wound up making a folder. So this R folder is one I created <clears throat> and inside of it, it has a, a markdown um, folder, a markdown file and, the, um, and a PowerPoint slide that it makes from it. And so once I'm in R, um, you know, you go new file, I, wanted, I made an R markdown, and you can pick what you what you want. So I picked presentation and made it as a PowerPoint. So once I made my code for what I wanted for the slide, so these these yellow highlights are like headers for the slide, and then this is text. And you can have it where it actually runs stuff. Like here, this is actually going to run it. The output's going to pop out. Um, it'll actually generate the slides that I'm going to show you. So the way um, the way you do it is you just hit knit, and I'll go ahead and do it. Hope I don't regret it, and then it generates the slides. So starting with that, we'll use those slides, um, and um, and then what you wind up having is in this Git window, it shows you how um, my um, branch is out of date with what's on my computer because I actually made a few changes. And you'll wind up, you'll click these, you want to commit them. And then I pushed them up. And then I, and right now there's a pull request waiting for, for Ryan or Isabella to accept. And when that happens, then this code and the slides will be put into the, the repo. So all of that was like, just about 90% of that is like something I'd never done before today. So <laughs> forgive me if some of it's kind of, kind of ugly, but I want to share that with you. And, um, and with that, we'll jump into the slides. Anyone have any questions before we start with that? Start with this. What are the advantages of, of doing it that way? As opposed to just making a PowerPoint? Yeah. All right. Scriptability or? Well, I'd love to hear what other people think, but um, I'll throw in what I, what I would think. So first of all, um, working entirely in one program in ours is kind of nice, but um, for something like this, maybe there's not big advantages, but having slides that actually um, have run, run programs, run, run this function, for example, um, you know, you might want to have it where you're, you're doing something or maybe you're doing some sort of demo and you want to make some sort of, sort of live 
um, change or whatever. I don't know. I'd love to hear from others um, that have some experience with it. I knew it was possible. I can pitch in. Go ahead. Um, so it one of the main advantages of making slides with with our markdown in the knitter package is the co-chunks primarily in my experience when I teach is because um, it's very difficult to in, write code in a tool like Power, Microsoft PowerPoint, for example. Um, I And for that reason, I usually like to export my slides into a more interactive format. So like HTML, for example, or use Slidey or something like this. Um, but it allows that um, the code chunks to remain as chunks of code, not um, text, for example, that can be uh, converted wrong and also makes it more reproducible um, so that you can just hand off the code itself, like the .rmd, um, and some of the person can knit to whatever um, format they prefer. Makes sense to me yeah. for that explanation. Um, yeah, um, I can jump in. And, go ahead. Um, just, just a rider to how what she said um, about the procedibility uh, is that um, I usually share the slide uh, with my students and they just copy the code from the slide directly. I run it on their system. So if it is PowerPoint, there is no way for you to share exactly code that they can use and reproduce your work. So yeah, so it's a cool way to use um, our Markdown to have your slide and share it with other people so that they can reproduce the result. Cool. That's really helpful. And um, so clearly there's people on, on this, um, in here that have had a lot more experience with it than I do. So I'm sure that I did not follow best practice on half of this thing. So please feel free to, to, uh, to call out um, on, uh, on ways that I could have done this better um, or how you would have done it or experience you've had with it. I would love to hear some. Um, I had, um, please, can you um, increase the size of your screen? I don't know, my eyes is, um, I cannot see very well. You, can you increase the size of your I'll increase video? the size for our, from our code? Sure. Okay. View, so yeah. Everyone's every, okay. So you, um, would I just zoom in? Would that do it? Okay. Is that um, bigger or a, a little more? It's okay. I can go bigger. Let me try. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. Cheers. Okay. Um, I'm happy to zoom in more if, if, if there's something you want to look at. I'm probably going to be showing the slides most of the time. I did go ahead and create um, a... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, you know what happened? <laughs> ah, I created a, a script that to run run those codes, um, and then I guess when I popped out, I didn't hit save, so I didn't. I lost that stuff. Darn it. Okay, never mind. But that's all right. So I still have um, the slides we can go through, and I'll, I'll drop in some code if we want to run any of the stuff. So let me pull this up. Close. There we go. Okay. So. Um, pulling from the, um, the, the, the book we're working on, if anyone would like me to drop any of these links into the chat, if you don't already have them easily accessible, there's the link to the book that we're reading and then the, um, the GitHub for the book club repo. So we're going over chapters five and six, getting started in foundational skills. So first thing we started looking at is, um, you know, writing code, you know, in, in a script. And so there's just basic functions that you can use like print and it'll print this. And if, um, and you can just tell it, add these things together. And so if you put that into a code chunk, it'll spit out output like this, you know, so it prints those things. And then like the 20 is the sum, we got the sums and subtractions. And so, um, 
I'll just show you how it looked here. So, um, you know, right here, this slide, write a function was the first one just saying what, what I did. But then the code chunk, there might be a way of telling it to do, to do it, but all it doesn't print out in the slide all of these things that are commented. The only thing it does is it runs the function. So creates this function of addition where um, you have, uh, you know, the function is there's a number one, a first number, second number, and you add those together. And so here it has, you know, if you add them together, what do you get? Um, you see, actually I'm on the wrong slide, the wrong part though, this is what we just did. So here is the slide where it says what we're gonna do and the code chunk, all it actually does is execute those. So when you run this, you can write it here, you know, it gives you these answers, which is what popped out on this slide. So I, I did it twice to see, this is what we're gonna do, this is what you get. Um, when you all, if, if there's anyone here that hasn't um, like installed the data um, EDU, um, I had trouble installing it. So I was, I was using what was recommended in the book of um, install dev tools and then um, use the dev, dev tools um, package to install from the GitHub the data. And I kept getting an error message, like there was some package it couldn't remove or something like that. So I went to the repo, for, um, the, the GitHub repo for data, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, data edu or edu, but there it says to use the remotes package for installing it. And that worked perfectly fine. So if anyone is um, having trouble installing through DevTools, try the remotes and that actually pulled it in for me. And Ryan, I don't know if you want to chime in here or any comments on that. Or not. So um, for foundational skills, chapter six goes over our, our projects, which we actually talked a little bit about already. Um, what I did when I cloned the repo from GitHub and I created a new project and added the URL, that was the, the creating projects um, aspect to it. Functions um, we're going to look at, I actually teased it a second ago because I thought I was on the wrong, I was on a different slide than I actually was on. Um, talk about some, some of our packages and data. So um, this is what I was showing you before. So you can create a function, and like I said, I know this is pretty ugly, but what you're looking, what I'm cueing you to is um, this is what the function does. You say, what if we create a function called addition and it's gonna have a function, so we use that word, and it has gonna have two numbers, we're calling call number one, number two, and what we want them to do is add number one and number two together. That's the function. And then once you create that function, you can just say addition, and here you can be explicit saying number one is three equals three, number two equals one, or it just assumes order, and you can just put those numbers together. And um, let me maximize the screen. And so when you run that, you know, these are the sums you get. So um, what um, the chapter brought us to, and here I'd, I'd like to just give a chance for others to talk some more. Um, there was there was a lot. I thought there was a fair amount of space given to trying to interpret what your code does, like trying to bring some logic to to some of these functions. Um, and then there was also a fair amount of space kind of being careful on typos. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that. But this section here, um, we have two libraries. So we would have needed to install package tidyverse, install packages, janitor, and then um, you would run this code. And um, we were asked to think through what we think Coalesce is doing here. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Says, anyone want to uh, uh, 
step up and uh, give give some sense making around what's hap what coalesce is probably doing in this case. Well, for me, I had never seen this before I saw it in the book, but I assumed from the names of what uh, that certification and certification one were so similar, I, I assumed that it was combining them in some way. Yeah. So um, I think um, the function find the first non-missing value given a vector. So um, if I'm right, yeah. So we used to uh, check if there is any missing value in the vector. So yeah, if yeah, something like that. Let me check. Right. It basically finds the first non miss first finds a missing value in certification and replaces it with certification one. Mm -hmm. So um Anyone have uh, data where they have cases where there's basically multiple files, but they're all incomplete in different ways, <laughs> and uh, they, and this this is a function that you you find useful or used. Yes, I I have a, I work with a lot of health data, and there's always missing values where a patient did not complete a field, and so. I, if it's a numeric, I typically coalesce with um, zero or non-missing null, so NAN value, so that I can still compute. Otherwise, R will drop NA records um, for my data set. Some functions will drop the entire records, and I would like to keep them. So coalesce is good for making sure that you have a value um, to prevent that from happening. <laughs> What happens when um, you have uh, instances of conflicting data? I don't understand the question. Oh, sorry. So if, um, let's say, like the example they give in the book is, you know, there's, there's missing on, you know, rows one, three, and five in one file, uh, or one row, one column mm -hmm. rather. And then another one they're missing in two and three. Okay, and they then those would just kind of fit together like a puzzle, no problem. But what happens where it's that's mostly the case, but there's an instance where both columns have data, but it's not the same data. You would get two records. Okay. You get so it would be two unique records. Just one would have um, the first value, and the other one would have the second value. Uh, okay, so it would return a result. It just would break, um, break the spell. Yeah, so coalesce is like a SQL function, like the joins. Um, so if, mm -hmm. if you do a left join, it's the same principle. Um, if you join on a certain column, yet uh, there is um, duplication in that column, like there's a conflict, you'll end up with two um, multiple records of the same. Like It's like one-to-many matching. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, Carlo, you have a, um, a comment you use, uh, use if else for this sort of thing? Um, so previously when coalesce was not a thing, um, the traditional way to write that is to check if the first value is NA. So if it is NA, you pick certification one. Otherwise, if it does have value, you use certification. So that's basically what that is saying. And I think coalesce is equivalent for in if certification is NA, it will pick certification underscore one. If certification is actually not NA, then it, it will pick it. So the nice thing with coalesce is that you can have two, three, four, five columns. And previously, if you have if else, you have this like nested if else or like a case one, but coalesce wraps it in, in a really nice way where it does all the heavy lifting for you. It selects which is the first instance among your columns that has not any. Hmm. Interesting. 
Now, my guess is uh, you'd have to do something a little more complicated in, in the scenario I raised where if you have conflicting data, I guess it wouldn't process that unless you did something uh, explicit. I have a question. This function remove empty, is it from Janita? Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. So can, can you say more? Um, I know um, the janitor package here, you load. Um, I know oh, is, the, is that function from janitor? Yeah. Um, clean names, I know it is. Yeah, um, but what about remove empty? Um, but you, you're uh, the, the, so let me see, remove empty. I don't know where that's from, actually. Does anyone know? It sounds like a janitor thing. But I don't I think it's, know. I think it's dplyr. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. OK. Huh. Interesting. And so we see some other things here. So the, the coalesce is working, up, working in conjunction with a mutate. So it's, we're going to create a new variable called cert. And then once we do that, we'll just get rid of the um, by the prior certification certification one through a select and a and a minus sign. Um, we weren't asked to dig into this code anymore, but anyone else want to comment on something else here that they've used or is useful? Okay, we'll move along. How about the code, but I'll just say I was uh, amused by and appreciated them explaining the process of getting to know new functions um, in kind of classroom friendly language for uh, for me coming from, you know, educational background, um, more than data background, the talk about looking for context clues and um, looking above and below, you know, um, I hadn't heard, I hadn't seen those worlds, worlds colliding before and it was uh, it was nice and helpful for me to see somebody putting it in that way. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Um, I appreciate that too. I have to say though, I tend to find our code is not that intuitive to interpret. Like I, I'll, you know, go to, um, you know, copy some code somewhere and it works, but I'm not exactly sure why it works, <laughs> or um, you know, just trying to figure out why something doesn't work. And I've had code where like. I know something's wrong. Like I have the quote on the wrong side of a parentheses or something and it, it still works and I'm like, it shouldn't work. So um, I, I appreciated them kind of um, encouraging me to, encouraging us to, to look at it because it's, it's not always crystal for me what's happening. Though here's pretty straightforward. So here's um, an instance of applying a filter function so um, we have, um, we identify um, X and I, so, so I want to talk about what, what rep does. Um, I, was, I, I haven't used that and I was looking it up and it wasn't exactly clear to me on this function. I thought it was saying like, like um, filter to instances where something occurs once maybe between one and three times or I, I wasn't I, I wasn't clear based on the, the way it, it, it ran but what I will do and this is what I intended to do until I didn't save any of my things um, is so where are we here we go so Let's copy this. So here we run this. Um, so through stats filter, it filters X, X is um, numbers between one and 100. Uh, so maybe it's divisible by three. Is that what, what um, it looks like is what's happening? Six, nine, 12, 15 numbers. I don't know. That wasn't 100% clear to me. But we were playing with uh, the filter function. Star Wars one was pretty obvious. Here we're going to filter from the um, Star Wars. Um, 
ships, oh, no, oh yeah, yeah. Ships that have a mass greater than 85. So here we see, um, or not ships, Darth Vader, I guess. Um, I'm not sure how to interpret the mass. Is that like literally like their mass, I suppose? So yeah, how big they are. So we got Darth Vader and so forth. So just experimenting with, with the filter function. Leave a space for anyone to comment on that. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It, so I know rep, it repeats one three times. So rep one comma three is one, one, one. So applied that to X, which is the sequence from one to a hundred. Mm -hmm. I, maybe it's highlighting that the stats filter function may behave differently than the dplyr filter that i'm also a little bit confused why yeah. the yeah. output because it says it says a time series and so it's getting treated as a time series data instead of just one to 100. yeah it wasn't really clear to me what was happening there yeah, I think the latest point, the point that they're trying to make here is that you can have different functions within different packages that have the same name. So you can use the package as like the prefix. But as to what is actually happening, uh, you can think of it as, so let's say you have a sequence of one, two, five. So you have one, two, three. And then what the stats filter is doing is it adds up the things that you're filtering. So as Leila pointed out, rep one underscore three repeats the value one three times. So you have one, one, one. And then you're sliding that vector uh, on your original vector. Sorry, I don't think I'm doing this justice, but on the first few digits of one to 10, you have one, two, three. And since you have one, 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 you're adding them together. So you get six. And then you slide that one, one, one vector one step again. So you have two, three, four. When you add it up, you'll get nine. And then you slide it again. You add it up, you'll get 12. Ah. You got, you, you got a double hitter because you explained the function and what their point was. So, that, that, so yes, you're going to have functions in packages that have the same name, but they do different things. And so what they're introducing here is this convention of using the package name and then this double colon before the function as a way of, of saying use filter from stats, not filter from the deployer. So um, yes, I think that's exactly, exactly right. Thank you, for both of those. Um, so, and then we looked at the, the what the start was having with Star Wars. Um, also, there's different ways of pulling in um, data. So I'll go ahead and grab these. Like I said, I had already had this pre queued but didn't save it. So essentially with what you would do for this is this says use the data EDU package and just grab um, this, this file, I suppose. What's different between this first one and these other two is the other two create an object that you'll see pop up over here in, um, so we're gonna sweep that. So if I run this, it doesn't create an object, but you see it in, in, the, um, in your console. So it just created this um, data right here. But here through this, um, this arrow function, you can create a um, object, but there's you can the directionality doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So you've got that, and you've got that, and there's more or less two ways of of getting to that. Does anyone have a preference? Like, because I almost ex I almost exclusively do the um, this last one where I'm starting with the object. Um, 
and then, you know, like here, then I'll have some sort of, you know, oops, not that, sorry. You know, that I'll pipe something or whatever from there. Does anyone um, have a different convention and a good reason why they do that? I guess I picked the right one. <laughs> Sounded like one of the authors preferred to do it the other way and just wanted to sneak in that it was allowed. Some... Right. Yeah, so it's, it's just versatile is, is, is the, the key in this, in this section here. So um, also um, exploring and manipulating your data. Um, in this section, um, there was some uh, emphasis put on paying attention to, um, to typos. So here I actually deleted the ones that had the typos um, in my original code. However, I'm going to pull them up. Um, I had the, here we go. Okay, so let me So here, um, let's see if this works. It does. This one won't because we spelled it wrong. It, it's missing an A. But the glimpse spelled correctly, well, okay. So we have um, you know, instances of things to look out for. There's another one here that's not gonna work. And the reason it's not gonna work is because there's a space. So essentially the um, dollar sign is there to say specific, glimpse specifically this variable. And this variable of AP test takers isn't gonna work because it has a space and it's not in quotes. So if we really want that, We've got to do this. So um, a couple of um, uh, type typographical problems that the authors wanted to point out is you know be careful <laughs> be careful about your spelling, and you know watch out for work when you do quotes and spaces and things like that. Does anyone have have any uh, best practices or or other instances around like silly things that trip you up and things you use to not get tripped up? I'll just keep on moving. So um, then inter introduce the, um, the pipe operator. Um, and I'm probably not going to give the best explanation on what it does, but it, it basically passes information um, through it. There's, there's a, probably a grammatic explanation. I'd love for someone to give us the more grammatically correct explanation of what pipe does. If anyone wants to speak to either of these. What's this, this um, percent and the uh, less than sign percent? Anyone want to speak to the grammar around that? I don't have a really formal term, but the way I've seen it described is like, and then. So it's like, take the data and then group by and then count. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to pass this into here. And let's, anyone want to comment on? Uh, okay, I guess you didn't like that. Hold on. So much for copying from my slide. Uh, okay, here we go. So here we have, have our file. We're going to group by um, district name. So it's going to 
um, speak to that factor, you know, uh, of, of what the name is, and then it's going to count by that. So if we do this, oh, come on, what did I do wrong? I thought I downloaded everything right. Okay. Well, um, the difference, oh, is there, is there an error? Is, is this one of the ones where you trip me up? Yeah, that one works. Okay. So why did, oh, why didn't that work? space and no quotes. So the next, so again, the typo got gets you. So, but if we do group and count and we use the second chunk of code, um, it's gonna count how many each of these. What's gonna happen here? Now we're not declaring filter. So is it going to do the stats filter or the dplyr filter? Anyone want to know how, how it knows which one to use when we know we've got both of them working for us? It's the one, the library you called last. Ah, okay. And maybe just because by the, by the fact of using pipes, it's going to pull in the dplyr maybe, I don't know. So let's, let's Let's experiment with something here. So let me try, if I do this. Oh, hold on. Okay, so I do this, I've run the stats filter last. Let's see if this is gonna do what, it's, what we would expect it to. So it looks like it gave us everything that's greater than 10. Maybe in this context, stats filter and deployer filter does the same thing. Because I think that's exactly what we would get with deployer too. With um, this next section, we've just added, we've piped in another command. Now we're gonna arrange it, descending by the size, right? So 118 is, is top. We didn't have descending here. Oh, I did something, didn't I? Maybe I just want to do. So much for improvising. Huh. I don't know. Looks like that last one arranged it by the district name is in alphabetical order now. There you go. Bingo. That's right. Okay. So, um, oh, and that's actually my last slide. And I didn't, I don't think I used all my time. So I didn't pace myself well or, uh, or because uh, I had two chapters, so I should have filled the time more than that. Um, anyone want to dig into something that um, maybe I only um, touched on or have questions on some of the more logistical stuff of like connecting to GitHub or how we do any of that other stuff? Uh, yeah, I have a, a like a broad question about the GitHub thing, mm -hmm. which I had frankly never done. I mostly just do stuff locally and then struggle to upload stuff to GitHub later. So I was just wondering, is that generally how, how you and other people do things? Because um, that was very interesting to see. Well, I'm going to answer first just because I'm on the line, but I think other people on this call are going to have more to say. I'm trying to do that more. Um, in terms of um, you know the advantage, what I was trying to achieve by creating these these files um, that um, let me see, I don't know if it's been accepted now, is hopefully then in your branch if you want to and it's at all helpful to look at um, my ugly code um, and my my um, 
my file of you know just how it's set up like it's basic stuff you know the output needs to say powerpoint presentation and um, maybe you want to look at you know how, how i did the you know the header for the slide or inserted um bullets or um you know basically in order to make sure make sure the line breaks i put two spaces after it so if anyone in future presentations wants their slides uploaded and you want to do it through R, um, that was my motivation. Um, and it's something I've always wanted to be able to do. So I kind of use this as a opportunity to stretch a little bit. Um, but um, so I think it's really about the sharing and being able to, and of course then if it, obviously someone's going to be on their own slides so no one's going to be interested in coming here and helping me improve these slides but to the extent we were all working on the same slide deck then you could like oh here's how you do the page breaks right you know or um you know there's plenty of other places where like it's just kind of heinous looking um and it would have been, been a better way to do it then you could in your branch pull down my slides work, work in the improvement push it um Put, do a push it back up to your branch and do a pull request and then you know we could it's, it's about sort of the collaboration so those i think are the main things but i'd love to hear what other people have to say i know for some of us who um, are new to github it might be actually helpful mark if, if you wouldn't mind just walking through what it means to um to uh what is it to um branch. Um, to to begin from from our from our studio mm -hmm. to push something up into github i know for me when i first started doing this man that took me a long time to muddle through mm -hmm. um so it might be super helpful since we have a few minutes for those of us who are a little naive around it just to see the Hello from sure. yeah. well okay so first of all i'm going to totally embarrass myself because i always have to um uh when i do the password my first password always rejects and then i've got to do it a second time and there, there's things i haven't totally worked out but so um please bear with me but um the main thing that you need to note so if you go to the main repo on the um, r4ds you need to get your own branch of it and so you're going to know what that looks like because it's going to have your name slash and then that version. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to copy the code of your branch right here. Come here and you copy it. Um, and then um, you want to create a project. So I, I already kind of touched on this at the very beginning, but I just want to make sure people know before you can even make changes to your branch, you need to make sure you've got this project. So you're gonna get a new project. Um, and yes, I'm gonna hit save this time so I don't delete that other thing. Okay. Um, you wanna get the version control, GitHub. And if you paste it here, it's gonna detect the name. And also you wanna be mindful of paying attention to where, the, where it browses to. And then you create the project. Then at that point, you're going to have a project that a clone of the of your branch on your computer. Um, and then I created, you know, this um, our markdown file, which I when I knit it, which is this icon here, it creates the the PowerPoint. So then there's two files: my art markdown and then the PowerPoint it creates. And then I also created this script that I was just doing for demoing. So there's three variables or three files. Then if you go to Git, you're gonna see how your local copy is out of sync with, um, with, with your branch on GitHub. So the first thing you'll do is you don't have to update everything. Like, so there is a file where you can have it where it, it ignores certain files and you can put like a extension on there that says, don't ever upload this thing. Um, or you can just not select it. I'm going to select everything. And, the first, and so these are three things that are different. These are my three files, my script file, my PowerPoint, my, my markdown. 
So the first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna commit it after it's checked. And what's neat is it'll show you how it how it's different. So I'm not sure what was changed on each of these. So this line change uh, doesn't look like it's a remarkable change. But anyway, all three of those things are, are, are selected. They're going to come here and need to type some sort of message. So I'm, so I'm going to call this chapter five and six um, correction. I don't know. Is the one I did before, I, I called it something different. Once that's in the, once you have that message, then you commit it. Boom. Okay. Then you hit close. And now I'm going to push that up to GitHub. And here's where it's going to ask me to log in. And I always um, fail the first time. So first I'm going to just not even going to bother here. I don't know why I won't accept it. It's a cancel, but I got to do it here. Thanks for not minding me putting you on the spot there, Mark. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a question about how to get a branch. And um, I think that you can actually create your branch when you're doing your commit instead of pushing it into the main branch, you can actually push it into a, a one branch down. And um, Mark, maybe you'll, you'll show that too, sorry. I will try, let me, let me, because <laughs> I know in that, that Get Happy um, uh, resource, there's like three different ways of doing it. And um, I just, when I found one that worked, I just always do it that way, but let, let, we can explore that. So first I put in my username here, it's going to ask for my password. And this almost always works. So let's see. Hey, it liked it. So now what that means is in my extension, not this one, not the main one, we go to my extension, which is here. Um, there should be um, a new change, which, yeah, so I think this is what I just did, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm still pretty clumsy at all of this. Um, yeah, so this was two minutes ago, so that must be the, what I just did. So, someone, someone, I need a lifeline. I think I want to do a new pull request. And there should be... Yep, here is chapters five and six correction. Um, here we go. So what I think I, so I'm probably gonna do this wrong. This is, this, <laughs> you, you are putting me on the spot, but I, I don't mind because um, I need to know how to do this better. Um, someone can certainly jump in and, and uh, tell me what, where I'm going wrong. But You're making some, us all feel better, Mark. Oh, good. That, <laughs> If I'm doing that, then that, that, that's one of the main things. Um, I did it earlier, I swear. So here's files that changed. Maybe this is what I wanna to go to. Here's the changes. Uh, what I think I want, here, commits. Here, correction. I don't think that's where I wanna, where I wanna to get to it though. Hold on, pull request. I wanna do a new pull request. This worked before. Okay, and create, but I don't know why, what I'm doing wrong. Um, is it because you're not in your repo? You're in the- Oh, uh, did, did I get back into this? Is that what happened? Holy cow. It, yeah. <laughs> that, that would explain it. Okay, so hold on. All right, that is probably exactly what's going on. Thank you. And I got eight minutes to try and save face here. All right, so here we are. That's this. And what I want, I think I go pull request. And I want to do, oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. New pull request. There you go. Nah, I don't know that that's it. Darn it! I might just um, fail because this is because this is it. Changes five and six, right? But I don't know what I'm why I'm not getting to the thing. So I might just give up. But don't let my failure discourage you because I stumble on this all the time. Oh, see, I got back into the main one. 
So I'm doing something wrong. I keep clicking on, so this is the one that hasn't been accepted yet. So I'm doing, I'm clicking on something that's getting me back. You see where it's R4DS? So I'm clearly messing up somewhere. Uh, Isabella, save me. <laughs> I, maybe it is because you already started a pull request and it hasn't been accepted yet. When you make new commits, um, it gets like pulled in as part of that pull request. Oh. So if you go to, um, Let's see. If you go to book clubs dash uh, DSI, you are the R four DS one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then go to pull requests. If that's what's going on, that makes perfect sense. Because and then click the one, yeah. yeah, click that. I think you should see. Oh, both of your commits. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So because my prior one wasn't accepted, the, mm -hmm. my recent commit just got swooped up with it. Exactly. Yeah. That's and great then, news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so once it gets accepted, um, you know, they'll bring in your changes to their repo. And so if you want to make a new change, then you'll have to pull, like ask for new pull requests. Well, that is fantastic news. Okay. Well, I feel better now that I couldn't figure yeah. out how to do it. No, you did. Great. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Catherine, um, so you were saying something about um, making a branch at the commit level. So let me just come here and just make some gibberish changes. Um, and I'm not sure how long it takes for it to, maybe I gotta save it. There you go. So I just added this change and so now it knows I'm out of sync. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna commit. And they see it's highlighting the change. Log on failed. Wait, hold on. What did I do wrong? One second. I want to commit first. Okay. All right. So that's there. So now um, I'm just going to call this test. Now, at some now, Catherine, do you know at what point that I already passed the point where I would do the branch now? Should I do, should I do something different here? Um, I, I'm, I'm a little naive here because I forget, but you can go over there to the top left where it says main, um, right next to history, click on that and um, is that where you add a branch? I don't recognize any of those. Um, neither. I expected something to say branch one, branch two. Um, let's see, I always create a branch by clicking the button next to the main in our studio it says someone in the chat yeah the way i do it i i I'm sorry Isabel. oh um, no no worries. um like to be honest i almost never do branches because i don't have anybody to use github with really um but uh mark if you go back to the main yeah uh, like close that? out of that mm -hmm. and then there's like the uh, main on the top right and there's two purple boxes mm -hmm. yeah that's that's what I use to create my branches always. <laughs> like oh, okay. So instead of making the branch in GitHub, which I did, and then cloning from there, you could just do it right from here. Yeah, I think that's an option. Um, yeah. Anytime I create a branch, I I like if you create a new branch um, where it says main right now, it'll mm -hmm. change to that branch name, and I just go back and forth. Um, uh, okay. I love the IDE. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll have to play with that. That's that's pretty neat. And thanks for suggesting that, Catherine. So um, I'm going to stop sharing so we can see each other better. And I don't know if there's any um, anything anyone else wants to jump on. And I appreciate everyone's patience with my floundering. Um, it was fun. Um, I learned something, so hopefully someone else did.